We just had the B patch right now and it nerfed a couple of things like Vladimir, Bastion Aphelios and Seven Demacia. And I think it was deserved, but I think they also forgot to nerf something. I'm talking about one comp that's already countering Bastion and Demacia themselves. So in my opinion, the comp around Kalista and Shadow Isle will be the comp that has the highest dominance in the next week. Let's talk about it. So about this comp, I wrote a guide on Tacta.com. It's completely free. I put the link in the description to all the guides I wrote there. And it's also the sponsor of my channel. I'm saying it out of transparency. But let's get into the guide. Um, so basically this comp, you want to play at level 8 with different versions. This first version I'm showing here is basically the version that's kind of the most common version. Because if you don't have a Shadow Ice path, this is more or less what you're going to play. You're going to have Kalista 3, Gwen 2 as your secondary carry. And then after you can rely on very late game units like Senna, Rise, Atrox. But honestly, you can have Emmer, you can have Cassante. If you have a Shadow Eye spot, you put on Cassante. It's insane. And obviously, if you have a Shadow Eye emblem, not a spot, an emblem, sorry, um, you want to have six Shadow Eye. So usually you add Viego. And you kind of want to have the Shadow Eye emblem either on Cassante or on Shen. Most of the time you find Shen before Cassante, so it will be on Shen. But obviously, if you have the opportunity to put on Cassante, put it on Cassante. And that's pretty much it. You just want to have tons of shield and you will win the fight that way because Kalista with the Ginzu will scale during the fight and you will always manage to get um, insane amount of attack speed and just win the fights like this. So for the game plan, from the early game to late game, I wrote everything here, but I'm going to show you with some examples. So for the early game, I think the best early game you can have is to play around Challengers and Ionia. I know that it's tempting to play around Shadow Isle because you want to play Shadow Isle in the late game. The problem I have with Shadow Isle is like Maokai and Viego don't make you win the early game. And also they don't really hold items properly for Kalista. So instead I prefer to play around Challengers. Samira is an excellent uh, unit you put Ginzu and she will help you win so many fights you can have Ionia it's great to have more uh, defenses on your front line but it's fine if you have a Kalista early obviously you play four challengers with Kalista right but it's not going to happen all the time my bird is screaming at the same time so uh, sorry for the small little noises she's just like uh, she wants to be part of this video but obviously I won't let her in otherwise she will destroy the micro and she will destroy everything so once you have a good early game, it's really important to have a good early game because you don't play this comp from behind. You really want to have a high tempo. You want to win streak with this comp and you want to put the pressure on the lobby. So when you're level 7, you want to roll for many things. First thing that you really need to have, obviously, is Kalista 2. If you don't have Kalista 2, you will lose the mid game and you will have a horrible game. Then obviously, this is where it becomes the trickiest. Usually, you want to play with four challengers, Ionia, uh, basically this comp. But one of the main problems of this comp is that it requires many focus units like Shen, Yasuo, Gwen, Kaisa. You don't need to have them at two stars, but you cannot need them. If the transition is too hard because you just don't hit or people are contesting you, I can suggest you to just stay with six challengers or four challengers and four Shadow Isle with Maokai, Viego, and you have Tarik here. So you can still have a pretty decent board. Uh, don't necessarily try always to get this because it can be hard. But for sure, what's really important is that everything that has three costs, two costs or one cost need to be two stars. So here, Irelia, Tariq and Kalista. If you still play Viego, Maokai, they need to be at two stars, of course. From that point, once you stabilize your board, meaning you, you hit more or less something similar and you start winning fights at stage 4, meaning that you are strong enough and you don't need to roll more to be stronger. You rebuild your Econ to around 50 gold if you can, obviously. And from that point, you have to assess yourself if you can roll a level 7 for Kalista 3 because you're not contested, because you already have 5, 6 Kalista ready uh, on your bench or on your board. And that way, yes, go and roll for Kalista 3. If you're not in these situations, then you need to play tempo. By playing tempo, I mean that you need to push level 8. Because like I said earlier, this comp welcomes a lot of 5 cost units. So at level 8, whatever 5 cost units you find, maybe except Ari, but even Ari can be played. 
you have to play them and that's why actually i prefer to play with the tempo version meaning that i just stay with kalista 2 i win my stage 4 rounds and then i push level 8 at uh, stage 5 and then here i roll down to, to potentially have kalista 3 but you have less goal to find kalista 3 but more importantly to find gwen 2 and potentially Atrox, Senna, Rise, whatever thing that makes my board much, much stronger. And from that point, it's fine if you don't finish first because someone else found Kalista 3 or whatever, you still have a very, very decent game. And most of the time, it will be more consistent rather than rolling for Kalista 3. But anyway, you can still roll for Kalista 3 at level 7. I'm not saying it's a bad strategy, it's just like my preference is rather to play tempo so for the best legend obviously it's earth right now in the meta earth is the best legend because thanks to ancient archives uh, one and two it allows you to have so many options uh, to play different combs that are all very strong and if you play earth you will have shadow eye emblem more consistently and you will see that on average this comp has a higher average if you have a shadow eye emblem rather than if you don't have it so yeah uh, earth is just the best and also all the other augments from earth like these ones they are good they're not s tier none of them are s tier but uh, most of them are pickable uh, except maybe these two where you most of the time want to avoid and since we're talking about omens uh, here it's a uh, omen tier list for this comp so there are two types of omens that you really want to have first is obviously anything that can help you have more shadow isle um, Shadow Eye Heart, Shadow Eye Crest, Shadow Eye Crown, um, they are just the best. The Shadow Eye Heart is a little bit weaker because unfortunately you can't put that on a unit so that unit cannot have that buff from Shadow Eye, but it's still very, very valuable, uh, especially if you are have it at stage 4-2 and you already play Shadow Eye, so that's it, hey, that's just plus one Shadow Eye, I can have six Shadow Eye very easily. And then the other type of augment you really want to have is anything that provides valuable stats to your shadow isle or to your team um obviously social distancing is insane magic wand gives you a road and you need them in your team and also it gives you more ap to kalista and gwen and senna they all love ap and pretty much any kind of thing one exception is final reserve because it just allows you to be level 9 and find your 5 cost units and like i told you earlier this comp welcomes very well all 5 cost units so this is really cool. And now we can talk about the items. So you have a different types of items that you want for Kalista and Gwen. So for Kalista, obviously, Ginzu, uh, Jewel Gauntlet, Giant Slayer, Godbreaker, and these ones are the best. Ginzu is mandatory. You can have two Ginzu, it's fine. And then after you can have a mix of them. Obviously, if you can't have them, it's fine. You can still have Rabadons. Infinity Edge is kind of weird, it just allows you to crit, but I would say Infinity Edge is great only if you have Guard Breaker after, or something that can amplify the crit a little bit more. And then after, the things you want to avoid, obviously Spear of Shojin, these kind of things are not that great, because um, one of the problems with Archangel is that it scales with the time, but for Kalista, it's just better to have flat AP at the beginning of the fight, because she can stack the Spears and have all the spears we have tons of true damage while archangel by the time she starts stacking she will deal maybe 20 true damage first second then after it's 25 and at the end of the fight it's only 50 where here you start directly at 40 uh, per spear and then for gwen it's a little bit different so obviously for gwen one of the best items you can have is thieves gloves if you don't have enough items and you you just can't stuff her properly but except for these situations, um, she's a unit who is kind of weird. So basically, one thing is like she's in the front line, so she needs to be tanky, but she is already kind of tanky thanks to the shield. But at the same time, if you put too much tankiness on her, she won't deal damage. That, that's kind of the problem you need to solve with Gwen. So usually that's, you can make a good mix. Usually Warmog, first of all, is one of the best items for her. It gives her tons of health, but most importantly, it gives her tons of shield so she will be super tanky and difficult to deal with and that's it that's your defensive item since you have one you don't need two other defensive items rather you will try to go for offensive items and the best are rabadon again um, you can go also with archangel guardbreaker giant slayers these are very very good offensive items and you can even have two of them is good one more plus two offensive items is a great mix um, otherwise 
because you already prioritize elements for Kalista, uh, you don't necessarily have the perfect items. You can also go for Warmog plus War Abaddon plus something like Edge of Night of Quicksilver to make her survive a bit longer or to prevent her from being stunned and do nothing. So this is okay. And last thing is Ionic Spark is a great item on her only if you don't have a Static on your team or Emma Digger who can shred the magic resistance. If you already have something like this, don't put Iron Disc Spark. It doesn't stack with the static, so it basically is useless. By the way, um, I'm taking these items from stats. Uh, as you can see, we are in Challenger for Kalista, three stars. And if she has three items, the best is uh, Ginzu. I don't know why it's in French though. Uh, but anyway, it's Ginzu. And then you have Giant Slayer, uh, Guardbreaker, and Joe Lotus, uh, Joe Gauntlet. And then after you have uh, Archangel, Static, and, and Hush, which are not that great. And if we look at Gwen with a uh, two star and four Shadow Eyes setup, um, except Morello, Morello because it doesn't have a lot of uh, games, so it's kind of hard to tell. We are in Challengers and we have like Warmog with 40 games, has a huge win rate. Um, we have obviously Thieves Gloves. Uh, Rabadon, huge win rate. And then after we have some kind of utility with uh, Sunfire, but we have Guardbreaker, um, we have Spark, we have this kind of stuff. So honestly, um, Gwen is a bit weird to stuff, but she can take many, many different stuff. You just need to find a good balance between defense and offense on her. That way she can be very, very powerful. If you want to be successful in life, there's only one solution. It is to subscribe to my free newsletter that I send every Monday. And every Monday, I make a clear analysis of the top five comps you want to play if you want to climb in this meta. I'm saying this because obviously the more you climb on TFT, the more luck you have in life, the more chance you have to find your lover. So to subscribe to my newsletter, it's very simple. I have the link in the description. And then after you just need to put your email address. You have to check, of course, the junk um, post in case that you don't receive it immediately. But anyway, this is how you can be successful in life. Until the next video and until you subscribe to the newsletter, see you at the top of the ladder and happy climbing.